Right. So today's chapter is combating to and from non petty formats. So um, today is not that kind of um, little bit technical chapter because it's just conversion of formats. Um, for example, from uh, conversion of um, data from to uh, tidy formats, uh, combating uh, something like that. Um, so today also we will see how we can do many conversion because um, text data comes in different shapes. Uh, one of the most widely used shape is called document time matrix, where we have document as a row and columns, we have the terms of each document. So the aim of this chapter is to show us how we can convert document time matrix in that format to tidy data frame. What we have seen previously is in tidy function to tidy and um, to convert data um, into words and uh, number of their parents. So also we'll explore how to tidy corpus object which combine raw text um, with document metadata. So we have another object called corpus. Um, so a corpus contain not only text, but some other metadata. So tidy approach also uh, give us a power to turn that into tidy form. We'll see that in a bit. So let's go on. So um, this is actually what we did um, in the previous session. We had given a data, we changed it into tidy text format. And uh, maybe we, if we're doing sentiment analysis, and then we can do some kind of summarization. We count the number of words in the document and do visualize. That is what we did from here, text data, and we do on next, that is on the data to turn the data into uh, tokens within this function, uh, on next tokens. And when we have on the next token, we, when we want to do sentiment analysis, we compare these tokens with our lexicon in sentiment analysis. Then we count the number of tokens uh, for in the lexicon and get summarization and plot. But in this way, um, we have another format, which is document term matrix. Why document term matrix? Tidy, tidy text is a convention or approach comes in tidy text packages. Um, because of tidy uh, structure we have from uh, 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 from other uh, tidy uh, tidy data frame. But document term matrix is widely used in text pack other text mining packages like Contida and also like TM package. Um, I'm not sure, Justin, are you aware of TM package? Hello? Hey, can you hear me? Sorry, yeah. I was muted. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I I prefer Quantata, but I've used TM. Right, yes, <laughs> me too. I prefer Quantata. I mean, Quantata is so powerful, you know. Um, uh, I really like Quantata. It does great job. So, yeah, so we can see here now we have um, document term matrix, um, which has been used by TM Quantata, but the tidy text mainly comes from tidy text package. But other packages, uh, need this as input document term matrix to do some kind of machine learning. So that is the motivation behind that. Okay, now if I have my data in tidy form, um, how can I change it to document term matrix? Or if it is document term, how can I change? So this is what we're gonna see. So one of the most common structure that text mining packet work with is document term matrix. Um, I believe we all know what document term matrix is. And um, each row represent one document. Um, each column represent one term and each value contains the number of appearance of that term in the document. So for example, we have um, a two, um, a books, um, two books or three articles, then document, document term matrix will have these three articles, each article in one row. So if we have three articles, we will have three rows, but the terms or words in that article will be now a column in the column. So this will be like somehow in kind of intersection. You, we may not necessarily see the term in each document, and this leads to what is called sparse um, representation of matrix we'll see in, in future. So here there's a document term matrix object cannot be used directly with tidy models. So because it's not in tidy uh, approach. So uh, with tidy tools, just a tidy data frame cannot be used as input for most te text mining parts. Let's 
tidy test uh, tidy test packet provides two valves that convert between two formats. So since um, we cannot use document term matrix object directly with tidy tools, then we need a way in which we need to convert document term matrix to tidy format so that we can uh, leverage the tools that tidy tools provided. So tidy this package provides two um, functions. Number one is tidy, turns a document term matrix into tidy data frame, and cast turns tidy one term per row data frame into matrix. So let's look at what that means. So the cast um, has different uh, functions, the cast pass, cast TDM, cast DFM. So um, cast DTM convert document term matrix from TM package because they generate what is called the um, document term matrix, but T continue generate document future matrix. So they, we have two different functions, but also we have other packages like matrix package. Um, we have cast pass, so they need pass object to work with. So we have two um, way in which we can do with that. So let we see an example. All right. So the first one is to tidy in document term matrix objects. So how can we turn document term matrix objects into tidy format? Um, hey, let's John, look. just to yeah. inter interrupt really briefly. I, I don't know if this is a problem on Zoom or if it's a problem on my computer, but um your your slides or what i'm seeing from your screen share is not changing like what i see right now is chapter three converting to and from non-tidy formats <laughs> learning objectives really uh-huh yeah and i can see I'm... your what's what's interesting is that i can see your mouse moving around but i don't ah um, okay so i Let's see so <laughs> yeah, you should have, maybe, uh, yeah, uh, I think I'm the one that, uh, what about now? Ah, uh, yeah, now it's, now it's updated. I see 2.11. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, all right. So I wasn't actually explaining with that. Okay. Oh, that's bad, um, actually. Okay. Hmm. No, no, no. Okay, where is the chapter? Right. So you are just looking at me. You, you don't. <laughs> um, you were just listening to me. Um, oh, God. You should have let me know on time. So, yeah. Okay. So. Shall we come back from the beginning? I think we can, right? Uh, maybe, hello, can you hear me, Justin? Hello, I cannot hear you. Hello? Justin? Yeah, yeah. Um, can um, you hear me? But yes. Okay, you can hear me now. Right. Okay. So I said, um, do we need to go over or we can, what do you think? Okay, maybe I can start from here just to summarize uh, because um, the, uh, Today, the session is not that uh, long. So, um, right, so let me start from here. So as I said, um, we have different way data is represented, text data. Um, one approach is tidy text, which is provided by tidy text package, but other packages like TM and Quandida provide different uh, way to manage text, which is called document term matrix, or document future matrix. So um, we need a way in which we can actually, if we want to um, leverage tidy text tools to work on um, document term matrix, we need to provide a function that will change document term matrix to maybe uh, tidy format so that we can work on uh, similar, uh, with similar functions. So to do that, 
ID text provide two functions. Um, uh, the tidy to provide two functions, tidy data and cast. So what tidy data does, it turns a document term matrix into tidy data frame, um, or it turns a document future matrix in case of Contida into data frame. Then the cast is a reverse. It turns a tidy one term per row data frame into matrix. So these are just two ways, the tidy function change a document matrix or document feature matrix into the tidy data frame and the cast function change tidy data frame into either of these cast first cast tdm and cast dvm so the cast dtm change tidy data frame to document term matrix and the cast dfm change tidy data frame into document feature matrix um, but we also have cast sparse, which is actually from matrix package, which needs also to be uh, in that kind of format. So we have this. So let's look at um, the first case where we can combine uh, uh, tidying document term matrix object. This is the first one we're going to look at. Right. So um, the tidy, uh, the document term matrix is an object from uh, TM package. So let's load TM here and we can see um, we grab a data from uh, packet topic models and we can look at this. So this is uh, data from topic model and this line is one document. This is second document. This is such, so we have many documents. Uh, this is telling us that um, uh, these are the terms in each. So this Aaron, abandon, abandon, abandon. These are the terms in all the documents. But in the first document, we don't have Aaron. In the first document, we don't have abandon. That is why we have zero. In the first document, we don't have abandon. That is why we. But if in the first document we have the word Aaron like 10 times, two times, or three times, then we can see uh, two here. So also, we can see all the document here we have here that we have six documents I showed here. We don't have any of this word appears in this document. Um, it, they may appear in other documents. So this is why document term matrix it is past matrix in some ways. So we, let's look at the uh, document term matrix. We can see it is 99% sparsity. And the, um, uh, we have this number of document, but we, I just show six. And we have terms this number, but I just saw one, two, three, four, five. This is so we I just saw five terms, but we have this number of terms. Um, we can see here uh, non sparse entries. How many non sparse entries in this? So these are the document total number of documents. These are some of the documents that are non sparse. So it means the document is ninety nine percent sparse. Um, the sparsity in it, and the maximum term length when it, so these are. And this is time frequency, which is also one feature in uh, uh, TM packet, but we are not talking about it. So we can see here that data sets contain this document, um, terms, and this is 99% sparse. So this is actually what, um, how document term matrix looks like. Um, but we can also here look at the terms here, um, just show, so, um, show some, but we can also <coughs> now, when we want to change actually this one from uh, document term matrix, because this is not in tidy format. How do we want to change tidy format? We want to like see, okay, this is a word column where we have the words and in another column, we can see the number of the count that is tidy format. So we can use um, the tidy test and uh, this is the document term matrix and we call this function tidy. And you can see here this document feature mat document term matrix is now changed into tidy format. Um, you can see this one, uh, but here you can see because in the first document there is uh, in the first document Aaron the word Aaron is not there. The word abandon we don't have it. We don't have abandon. So this means that all this word will not appear in the. Can you see it start from adding adults? So it means the tidy format tidy function will only select those terms that are non-zero. So it means here, all this one, adding, add on, ego, they all appear in the first document. 
So, but all this one, like Aaron, Abandon, they don't appear. So we, they will not be represented in the uh, tidy format. So we have this vari uh, we have this variable document, term and count. So we have document, term and count. This is tidy format. And only the non-zero values are included in the tidy output. So you can see only the non-zeros are included. And since we have our data in tidy format, then we can do what we want. So for example, as we have seen in the previous chapters, you can do sentiment analysis, then we can use inner join and get sentiment from Bing lexicon. And we can do inner join with that and we can see um, how the negative uh, stuff are. We can also plot with that uh, the, the positive and negative words in the uh, corpus. So this is how it is. So basically what this section is telling us is how can we tidy document term matrix objects to tidy format. The simple answer is just using um, a tidy function just to call the document term matrix and you will get your tidy format. But we should know that all non-zero um, um, terms are not included. It only includes terms that are one and above. So that is this section. Um, any question, Justin, before we continue? Uh, no, no questions. Everything was right. great. OK, all right. So um, let's move on to the next one, um, DFM object. So basically, um, DFM is document feature matrix. Um, the, quanti the TM package uses document matrix, but Quantida uses um, uh, document feature matrix. So this is Quantida website. I really like um, the Quantida package. And they have a lot of stuff, uh, Quantida, Quantida text model, Quantida text start, Quantida sentiment as well, Quantida tidy. So they have um, a lot of stuff and it's easy. To me, um, I look as Quantida is even more easier than TM package. Um, it also provides a lot of um, uh, poss possibilities. So um, that way, if you have document feature matrix from Quantida, then you need to change that document feature matrix to tidy format. Um, so let's look at how we can do that. So this is an example of um, creating document feature from Quantida. Um, so we have like a document feature matrix, 59 document. Um, these are the features, um, which is the dispersity and doc bar. So this is an example of document feature matrix from Quantida. And we can actually, um, we want to change it to tidy. It's basically the same function we work on uh, uh, document term matrix applies here. So this is basically the something we apply this one, which is document, term, and count. So also, if you remember, the tidy always, what it returns is this, um, document, term, and count. The document is the document you have, one, two, three, and term, these are the term in the document feature or document term matrix. So we have that also as well. Um, so if you change your data into document, uh, 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 into tidy format, you can do a lot of things. So this one, maybe he suggests that you can do other things. We may be interested in finding the word more specific to each of the integral speech because the data is about integral speech. Washington, Nantin Adam, Jefferson, Madison. Um, these are the, uh, some of the terms in the uh, speeches. And you can show this one here which is um, show the uh, count, the number, and yeah. Another example he shows, um, example of visualizing possible with tidy, we could extract the year from each document name and compute the total number of words within each year. So this is another example, we can do it with it. Um, here we extract the year and uh, we plot this one as well. So we can see here, for example, America, because these are the words we are interested in to filter the word from the text we have. Then we filter it and then we float this. We have America, we have uh, God, foreign, union. Then we can see how this was um, uh, changes from each year uh, among the corpus. So you basically you can do a lot of things. Normally we do like um, uh, using ggplot, using tidy data. So the main idea, the takeaway from this um, how can we convert document feature matrix to uh, tidy format? The same story with the previous one, just using tidy um, function, and it will turn your data into uh, tidy format. 
and the world is free you can do whatever you like um, depending on the use case right so um johnson any question before we continue uh no all right so let's go on um um so now we have seen how you can actually change your uh, document uh, materials or document future materials into tidy format so the next one is how can we change um cast our tidy data into matrix into whether document matrix into a, something like that so let's look at that so just as some existing text mining packages flow by document matrix as sample data or output some algorithm accept such matrix is input so um the reason is um some algorithms actually re require their input to be um, whether uh, document matrix or document feature matrix or somehow matrix so that you can do some stuff like machine learning. So tidy text provide cast bar to convert from tidy form to this matrix. So let's look at this, um, our data set in the previous document feature doc, um, tidy format, which is this document term and count. Now, how can we convert this to um, document term matrix. So basically the simple fun function, just call this function um, with, um, this is your document feature, I mean, this is your tidy format and you can call it cast. Then we provide this document term count here that we have. And this will basically change this to uh, document term matrix. You can see this is the same story you have shown previously. This is the number of document. This is the number of terms. This is and it was 99%. So if we remember here, uh, where we saw it here, can you see that? Uh, original, this associated print data set, this is the sparsity, this is the number of document. And we take this one to change it to, uh, you can see here to tidy format and to do both. When we want to change here, we take this tidy format and we call this um, cast and we provide these three arguments. Uh, which are basically from here we provide all the three argument here document and the data becomes now into document matrix and now with document matrix you can it can serve as an input to many uh, um, uh, algorithms such as machine learning algorithm that we can use for that purpose but also the same story can be used with um, uh, document future matrix from quantida um, we can convert this one to quantida um, representation document future we can see this one the same story we have seen uh, previously um also we can cast it to space matrix which is basically used to uh, change it to matrix object uh, so also that right so um, this is basically what this is telling us um how can we cast or change tidy text into a matrix um the simple answer is using um cast bars um so one good thing is this is this is cast if it want to change it to document matrix you just say tdm and provide the columns from your tidy format and also to document future matrix you provide that so yeah so this is an example on um just jane austen uh so you can see here uh, we call this uh, uh this jane austen books and we create here uh, we on next token we count and we have document future matrix so we can do many things with that um as we already know but here we convert this one to uh, tidy format we cast it to um uh document term matrix so when we have this uh uh we can do many things as well so this is just an example but uh because this casting process allowed for reading filtering and processing to be done using deployer uh and other tidy tools after which the data can be converted into document term matrix for machine learning application. So why do we need to cast and come back? You, you see, um, your data, if it is document, if it is, for example, in uh, in tidy format, um, you can do a lot of uh, tidy cleaning, deployer, you can do a lot of stuff. So if your, our data is in this format, we can employ all the, the tidy stuff to do on it when we finish that then we can cast our data to be in this so which is good way because you cannot apply some of the tidy stuff um, on your document matrix or document feature matrix so or, um, anyway um in quantida now we have tidy quantita tidy uh yeah 
quantita pro quantida provide uh, quantida tidy which is this so in quantida even if you have um, document future matrix uh, you can work along with um, uh, um, tidy tools like deploy and stuff like that so it works similarly quantida tidy uh, with tidy stuff but unlike TT, uh, unlike um, uh, tm packet so that is that for that um, right Hello. Um, any question, Justin? Before we continue. No, no. I but but thanks for telling me about Quantita Tidy. I had never heard of that. Oh, really? All right. Yeah. So Quantita Tidy is actually. Um, <laughs> I mean, I I'm actually using Quantita Tidy always because, like, um, it gives me the uh, Quantita Tidy. Yeah. So it's more, it's, it's Quantida, but the tidy version of it. So everything that Quantida can do, Quantida tidy can do that as well. So you can see, you can do all your, uh, I mean, everything you can do with that. Um, it's, it's just Quantida, but the tidy, tidy stuff. And they were the ones that did it, um, the Quantida team. So I think it's great, um, maybe. Yeah, oh, this also is a great tutorial. Um, uh, for Contida, um, when I was like um, um, trying to get involved with Contida, I really enjoyed this tutorial for Contida. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So let's go on. Um, so now, right. So tidying corpus object with metadata. So now, what we have seen now previously, we have seen now how we can actually um, convert. Um, document term matrix or document feature matrix into tidy form. And the second thing we have seen how we can combat um, uh, document, um, I mean, uh, a tidy form to cast it back to uh, document term matters. But there is one more thing um, which is called a corpus uh, that may need to be tidy also. So uh, there are that, I mean, a corpus is something that we have that it contains the text, um, the information, and some other metadata. Um, so, uh, for example, here is an example of a corpus here. Uh, let me see an example. Okay, let's look at it here. So here we call this data here, um, we call ACQ. Um, this is the corpus. So we can see here corpus specific zero uh, document level and uh, document is um, 50. Now this corpus, it is from TM package and come with the uh, 50 article from the news readers. So this means that this corpus does have 50 article in it. But um, unlike TM um, document term matrix where you only have document in the row and the column you have terms, the corpus contains the document, but also with some other metadata. For example, where what is the source of the uh, the document? For example, what time the document was sourced? Which year? With, so a corpus is a way to put together documents with some other metadata associated with it. So you see in um, document term matters, we don't have that feature. So let's look at, for example, um, the first document. So here the first, because they made it in corpus, they are stored in uh, list, uh, in, as a list. So you can see here, um, we have uh, that, that the, we have metadata 15 and we have the content is it. So when we look at the first metadata, this is the content, uh, which is computer terminal, the first uh, document, which is the first one. But I want to look at also the metadata. Uh, you see, we have 50 metadata here. So I look at the second, so you can see metadata. For example, the document, maybe it's a book. I don't know who is the author. What is the date, time, description, heading, ID, language of the document, origin, place. You... So in a nutshell, a corpus is some kind of a structure in which it stores um, uh, text with some metadata to it. So a corpus object is structured like a list with each item containing both text and metadata. 
This is a flexible store uh, method for a decking, but does not lend itself to processing with tidy tools. So this is where the problem comes in. Um, so this is a, an efficient and flexible storage method, but you cannot use it directly with tidy tools, of course. So we need a way in which we can change this um, corpus object to tidy format. How can we do that? Then uh, basically you can use your tidy function, you know, uh, as we have seen with document future matrix and document time matrix, even with corpus object, you can use tidy function to change that corpus. So you can see here with this um, uh, corpus object, we call tidy on it and we have this. So if you look at this one, these are some of the metadata, number one offer, timestamp. So if you look at the offer, timestamp, description, heading, all these metadata are now columns in tidy approach. And you can see the text now, which is the last one. So it means all these other metadata and even the text are now um, a columns. So you can see here, I can say column names. These are the columns. Can you see them? So all these ones are metadata. Only this one text contains the text. So since we, uh, uh, our data is now in like tidy format, we can do whatever we like. So we can now use a next token to, for example, find the most common one. So we can use on, on next tokens on our text column. Um, yeah, because that is what we do. So you can see here, select places, we drop this. And uh, on next tokens, you can see we pass the talk test column, which is this. And uh, yeah, um, we uh, do anti-join with stop words. We remove the stop word. And um, right, so um, yeah, we have a token and then we can count and sort it. So you can see this is it. So you can see these are some of the words uh, that appears quite um, uh, most common in the, um, the whole document, right? Because we have the text, which is the, so with, these are some of the, must come, but we can also find word that are specific to each article using TF idea. Yeah, so word that are specific to each article, um, we can see uh, these are the words. So this is um, actually how we can um, tidy corpus. So the takeaway from this section is um, we have what is called corpus. What is corpus? A corpus is an object that you can use to store data as well as the metadata of that data. So metadata are basically some information that describe the data more. So for example, when we collect uh, books as our, our, our document, then we can have the author of the book. We can have the language of the book. These are called metadata about this. So how can we change this corpus object into tidy? Then the same story using tidy function and change it to tidy. And then we can see all our metadata and also together with the uh, the uh, uh, the document column uh, becomes now in tidy format, and we can take everything to work with tidy. Um, right. So that is um, what I have. Um, the last example is example um, showing in mining financial articles. However, um, <laughs> I had some issue with um, um, with the. Uh, the data is not actually coming. Uh, there was some issue, I think. This is an example, uh, uh, mining financial articles, but um, this code is not running. This uh, package, um, the TM web plugin, there is some issue with it. Um, let me show you. So you cannot actually crawl the... Oh, okay, let's see GitHub. So... Yeah, so I think um, all these ones, you can see people are reporting all this one. So all this information, it, the function when using this one. So you see, if I try to use this to grab articles, all these articles from Google and stuff like that, the, this returns an error. And uh, when I check the, um, the package, uh, I see a lot of people are complaining and still it has not been solved. Uh, it seems like this is still going, this TM plugin package was supported. Hello, the problem is not package itself, but so this why I cannot proceed with this section because I cannot grab this data. But this is just like an example on how we can use this approach of combating uh, TM, uh, 
TMO, TFTM to uh, tidy tools. So I think, um, right. So this is all I have. Um, any question, um, Justin? No, I think you did a really good job presenting probably the, the least interesting chapter. So I'm really happy that you took it. Oh, really? <laughs> well, I think, you know, it's fun to talk about sentiment analysis or topic models, yeah. but to talk about converting between formats isn't, yeah. Um, you know, yeah. Yeah. isn't and, as exciting. Yeah, sure, sure. Right, right, right. So yeah, good to know that. So um, do you sign up for um, any chapter ahead? I did, I signed up, I signed up for two of them actually. One uh, that's soon, uh, it's the topic models chapter. So it's actually the uh -huh. chapter that's right after this. Right. I don't think I'll, right. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll prepare it as soon as possible. And then depending on other people's availability, I can do it sooner or later. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and so, then I signed up, and then I, I signed up for the very last chapter as well. Right, good, good. So, are you interested in text mining or NLP? Yeah, yeah, I'm. I'm interested in it. Uh, so, I I study political science, and oh. there's obviously a lot of text associated with politics. Ah, right. So, interesting. So, you are doing. Are you um, a professor or you are a student like masters or PhD? <laughs> Uh, I could, I'm a PhD student. Like, all oh, right, me too. I'm PhD student as well. So interesting. So, yeah. So the plan we had for this um, uh, is when we have we started with this book, then we go on to the next book, which is um, uh, the text mining, uh, supervised text mining in our supervised. Do you know the book? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've actually been been looking at it recently. So yeah, I'm excited about that. Yeah, so this is the plan. Um, um, in the couple of weeks, we, when we finish, then we can we will dive in into this book, um, supervised machine learning for text analysis. Um, yeah, um, I, I, I'm, I'm excited as well about this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely I, really excited I'm, I'm, about it. Yeah, I hope you will join us for that one as well. <laughs> oh, yeah, I definitely will. Okay, sure. Um, so thank you for listening um, today. And um, uh, I think next week, Laila may uh, present the chapter with Skip because she told me she had a um, grant and she's, um, <laughs> I mean, writing to submit. So that's why she was not able to join. So maybe um, next week when she joins, then week after, then you can present. Oh, I remember John said next week that it will not be a book club. Maybe it then week after. Exactly. Yeah. So, but but like I said, I'm gonna I'm going to go ahead and prepare the yeah the lesson just in case there's another grant, um, mm -hmm. you know, that comes up or something. Oh yeah. Sure. <laughs> okay. Right. Sure. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Um, see you um, on day like this. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye-bye, cha-cha.